Hey guys, welcome back to another kick challenge tutorial. This means my brigadiers have been working hard behind the scenes on some challenge pieces themed to cute spook, something they voted for back in July. Stick around to the end of the video to see everybody's entries and vote for your favourites in the comments. But for now, let's jump straight in with a simple cute Halloween frog. I've got my cake drum set up and I'm adding a little bit of ganache to stick my first cake down. Now, if you're a regular watcher, you'll know I usually torch my cakes and fill them with yummy fillings such as jam and buttercream. But because this was just for the tutorial and I needed to get it finished that week, I'm just using regular sized cakes, not cut in the middle, and I'm sticking it together with just a little bit of ganache. This is not something I would recommend if you're making a cake for a customer or a business. This is purely just for the tutorial and we're just going to be eating it with a bowl of custard in a few days. The cakes are five inch round and I'm just trimming around the bottom to round it out. I'm doing the same around the very top edge of the cake too. We're just aiming for a very loose round shape. To make it fully round without taking too much of the cake off, I'm going to give it a coat of dark chocolate ganache. It will also seal the cake in and give it some more shape. For tutorials on how to make ganache and watch me actually fill a cake properly with jam and buttercream, all the videos are in the description box. Now that our base layer is on, we're going to let that set and then add an extra layer on top. You'll see the cake is not as wobbly as it was before, now that the chocolate has set. I'm then taking an acetate smoother and bending it so it follows the contours of the sphere. I'm pretty happy with how this is now, it's just a simple cake. I've then got a cake board. This is just one of the single thickness cake boards, not a cake drum. And I'm just holding it near the top of the cake to see how I want the brim of the hat to sit. Do I want it leaning back? Do I want it off to the side? I'm going to have mine here slightly angled on the left. So I'm taking my knife and I'm trimming a flat surface at an angle for the board to sit on. I'm just checking its position to make sure it's slanted as I want it and then ganache any parts of the cake that are exposed to seal it back in. Once that's all set, I'm just dampening the cake with a little bit of water and wrapping around some lime green sugar paste. You just want to pull all the pleats towards the top where the flat bit is because you're not going to see that underneath the hat. I'm then cutting round the back where the paste overlaps and pushing together the join, smoothing it with your fingers to minimise the line. Now grab all your pleats and bunch them together. You just want to chop this off and keep pushing them and chopping it down so it's as flat as possible. I'm then taking another acetate smoother, these come in so handy, because not only will this push the sugar paste underneath, it also acts as a little cutter and will clean up the bottom. You can even scrape excess ganache from the board with it. For smoothing a sphere, I'm just taking a ball of sugar paste and pushing my fingers in to create a little handle. This then takes on the contours of the sphere and allows you to buff out any imperfections. It's really effective. I'm now covering my cake card. I'm actually covering the paper side, which is the underneath, because this is going to be the underneath of the hat. You don't have to cover this if you don't want to, but the underneath of the hat where I have it angled will be visible, so I just want to cover it. Now there's lots of wrinkles and bubbles on this, but this is just the paper underneath. I'm not going to be able to get this smooth, but that's okay because it's going underneath. I've just added a little bit of water, which is just enough to stick the hat on to the green sugar paste. Once you've got it in position, just use a gentle press. This is why I haven't covered the top yet, as it allows you to give a good press down to stick it in position. Whilst that sets, we're going to cover the board using the toilet seat method. If you're new here, make sure to check out all the links in the description below. 
as they always have more full in-depth tutorials on these crazy sounding techniques. This allows you to give you a clean finish around the bottom. Now we're moving back to the top of the hat and I'm just draping some purple paste over and cutting with a scalpel just where it overhangs and then running my hand around to smooth it to the paste underneath. I've then taken a circle cutter and cut out a yellow patch and flattened the bottom sticking it to the front of our frog. You can sometimes get air bubbles on pieces like this but they're easily pushed out with an acupuncture needle. The frog's eyes are just balls of paste which are very just slightly flattened and I'm sticking it with water to the underside of the hat and also the frog's face. This is usually enough to keep it in position but the other eye as it doesn't quite reach the top of the hat because it's on a slant it's not going to stay as well so you want to push a cocktail stick right down the centre and into the cake pushing it in as far as it will go. This will keep your eye in position and we're going to cover that hole later. I'm now taking a Dresden tool and marking in a cute little smile. I do it gently first just to make sure that it's symmetrical and where I want it and then I go in a little bit deeper to define the lines. With the flatter end of the Dresden tool I'm just pushing in a little open mouth area and once done filling it with a little ball of black paste, pushing it in every direction to fill the gaps. A tiny little oval of pink paste goes near the bottom for the tongue, which you can then place a little mark in the top. The same pink is used in a larger ball to stick underneath the eyes. This is just stuck with water and then I'm adding black circles, which will hide our cocktail stick for the eyes. Little white balls in the top right hand corner complete the eyes to make them look like they're shiny and alive. The front leg starts as a very soft teardrop shape and I'm cutting the larger end down at an angle so it creates a flat area to stick them against the body. Those are the front legs and the back legs are chunky big discs just stuck on either side with a small ball flattened in front as the back feet. Obviously this is a frog so you can go as detailed as you want giving him his webbed toes but the point of this cake was to keep it incredibly simple and easy. To finish the hat I'm taking some purple paste and starting to push a cone shape, smoothing it down towards the work surface to flatten the bottom and pulling the top up into a spike. You do have a few options here, this is just purely sugar paste but you can make it out of Rice Krispie treats if you wanted to make it more edible. Once you have your cone you just want to dampen the centre of the hat and place it into position. Make sure to go all the way around the cake to make sure it's centred and push it down to meet. And then just teasing that tapered point into a curly top of the witch's hat. No witch hat is ever complete without a band of ribbon so I'm just placing some black sugar paste and cutting off the join at the back. Back to the green again I'm creating a very simple leaf just to add some magic to the hat. I'm using the flat end of my Dresden tool to pull out rounded edges of the leaves and then pushing in between each one to give it a sort of oak leaf effect. Then you want to score down the entire centre to make it more leaf like and I'm just sticking this to the band of the hat. Then we're placing in a mushroom. So we're rolling some white paste, flattening out the bottom into a little cone and then using a slightly hot pink colour which is similar to the cheeks to create a mushroom cap. I'm just squashing it between my thumb and finger. Rest this on top of your toadstool stalk and manipulate a playful shape from the cap. I'm then just adding a few little white dots with white paint but you can just stick these on with sugar paste if you prefer. Finally to finish the Halloween look I've written out Hocus Crocus on a piece of greaseproof paper. I've cut the paper to the same contours as the board so I know that it will fit. I've also traced the same on the back with a pencil and I'm laying it on the board where I want it going back around the letters with more pencil to leave an impression. You can just see here the letters faintly in the paste. 
I've then got the final lettering as a picture on my phone so I know which parts of the letters to make thicker or thinner. Firstly, I'm going in with some gold paint and just marking in the very basics of the letters and then going back to add in the extras, such as the little feet on the ends of the letters. Everything I use will be linked in the description box below, including the gold paint. And that's it. Here's a nice, simple, cute Halloween cake anybody can give a go. Sometimes the simplest designs can be the cutest. Coming up next will be the mood board that we worked for for the theme, Cute Spook, and the Brigadier's entries after that. Don't forget to vote for your favourite in the comments below because they do win a little prize. And if you're interested in joining yourself, the link to join the Brigade is again, you've guessed it, in the description box. Thanks guys, see you next time.